I would say this, we're here to partner with the community and families. If there's any question whatsoever about juvenile fire setting or uh, egress plans, or you need assistance in determining what, you know, how, how do I know when to call on a fire, we are always here for you. And we want you to know to give us a call. We will come out. Uh, we're not here to punish. We're here to remedy and to make sure everybody's as safe as possible. And again, it, it has to be that partnership. Should they call the police? Should they call the fire department? What do they do if they've, their kid has been lighting several fires? Well, and that's a great, great question because they, now we're into the next level. If we're continuing to experience kids lighting fires, it's maybe growing in size, maybe becoming a little bit more bold with the types of fires and things. Then we're on a track that we need a more aggressive uh, actions. So one of the things that we do, fire department's the key, is the focal point. But let's say it's the, uh, maybe the school officials, the DOS units with mm -hmm. the sheriff's office have been instrumental in helping us deal with children on those levels. But they, like you mentioned, there are other external programs that involve the entire family to affect good outcomes. Mm -hmm. And they dig deeper as to root causes and root reasons for why the, maybe that they're setting these fires. And when you're starting to see those higher level mm -hmm. and more frequent, more bold, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. there's usually a root cause to it, which is maybe more that it requires more of a professional approach to it. There's a, a, a very good um, juvenile fire setter program, and it's usually run out of Henderson, and then mm -hmm. uh, Prump has used on a regular basis. And it's been highly successful, and it, it's affected some really good results with the kids and the families. And that's part of that curriculum. Um, interview process, uh, group sessions, field trips on some occasions, depending on the ages, if it's mm -hmm. age appropriate and things like that. But there's some really, really effective programs out there. Fire extinguisher is key. Um, placement, type, size, and that really goes by a case-by-case -case basis. And what is, where in the residence, as far as you know, maybe putting one in a master bedroom closet, easily accessible and with the appropriate size, yeah. Application, whether it's an A, B, C extinguisher, you know, most likely you're not going to have to deal with the metals and things like that, but appropriate size, the amount of material carries, the type of material, whether it's a pressurized water can to an extinguisher you may have a dry can you purchase in one of the local hardware stores, uh, those are the kind of things, but mounting them so that they're easily accessible, that you don't have to go running through a closet to try and locate them, it's on the floor somewhere, or it's still in the box. Mm -hmm. And they can sure you check them on a regular basis. Uh, does it appear that it's, it's in good shape? Has it been damaged at any point? Those kind of things. Okay. And, and I will tell you that uh, recent incidents, I've been in contact with um, representatives from the hospital, and we are going to carry a, a torch, if you will. And the legacy of, of recent events is going to be different. We're going to get that word out there, and we're going to partner, again, much more so with the community than maybe other communities have ever experienced. We want to make sure that the message is out there, the message is appropriate, and that people don't have necessarily the fear to come to the fire officials for assistance.